Hello, hello, I am Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company, and I have another pen here for you today. Four, actually. This is the Monteverde Impressa, a pen that was just recently released as of the making of this video. There's four completely different trim and color options going on here. Really kind of neat, different kind of pen, uh, but really kind of a, in, in that sweet spot kind of price range. It's a $50 list price pen. Um, selling, you know, at Goulet and other places uh, for $40. So it's really kind of a, a great pen in that price range. Um, so it's it fits great in Monteverde's lineup. They've actually got, I looked on our site the other day and I looked and I was like, dang, we got a lot of Monteverde pens. They've really come out with a lot of cool stuff in, in recent times. So uh, I'm going to explain to you, you know, kind of what's going on with this pen, show you all the different features and stuff like that uh, so that you have a better idea of what's going on with the Impressa. So when you get your Monteverde Impressa, it's going to come in the typical green Monteverde box with a sleeve on the outside. It's a, it's a decent box, nice and sturdy, will house your pen well. It's got the Monteverde logo up in here, so it's pretty legit looking. Um, it's got this little card in here telling you to register your pen. Yaffa is the distributor for Monteverde and there will be the one for your warranty registration. Never a bad idea. Uh, and then the pen is inside tucked away in this little removable insert here that has some instructions down in the bottom as well as a couple of standard international ink cartridges. Uh, the pen does come with a converter, but it comes with a couple of cartridges too. So a black and a blue, just enough to kind of get you started. They won't last you all that long, but at least if you're really eager to ink up your pen, you can do that quickly with the cartridges. However, I'm a bottled ink man myself, so uh, here's the pen. It's a pretty good size. It's a, um, you know, a medium sized pen. It's, it's relatively thin. It's a little bit longer. It's not, not fat, not thin. It's a nice size. I have really large hands. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, probably comparable in, in its overall size. It's a little bit thinner than, you know, a Twisby 580, um, grip. As far as the overall pen, it's kind of comparable to Twisby Classic, I guess. But uh, the pen itself is a push cap, so that's kind of cool. And it's, it locks in there pretty positively. So when you first get it, it really takes a little bit of force, and then it'll kind of break in a little bit as you, as you do it a couple of times. Um, it is postable, which is kind of neat. It posts really securely, too, so that's good. However, this is a really heavy pen. You know, I will say that. It's the whole pen overall is 40 grams, which is really quite heavy. Um, your typical, say, Lamy 2000 is about 25 grams. Um, so this one is quite a bit heavier, you know, than that one is even. But it's comfortable when you use it uh, both posted and unposted. So uh, personally, I would probably use it unposted a little bit more just to save on some of the weight. It tends to get a little back weighted when you have the cap on there. Um, it's not too bad though. It's manageable, but I can imagine if you have smaller hands that it could be more of an issue. So it's something to keep in mind. You can definitely post it. It's very easy to do that, uh, but just keep that weight and balance in mind as you're doing it. Um, some other cool things about it, it's got a spring clip that actually gives you quite a, quite a bite there. So you can put this on some pretty thick clothing. Um, in general, I usually don't recommend clipping it onto like jeans pockets or anything like that, like in your pants or anything. This one you totally could though. I mean, within reason. The thing I would be careful of is, if you, I, always, I always hesitate recommending clipping it under your pants pocket just because when you do that, you risk, you know, keys and stuff that could scratch up against it. And, you know, I don't know exactly what kind of plating they use on the finishes of these pens, but I can imagine that it's probably not too great to have keys rubbing up against it. So, you know, just be aware of that. Um, it's definitely some, some cool aspects of this pen. The design, kind of the aesthetics is, is uh, one of them. And uh, one of the neatest things is that this cap is uh, kind of a square cap here and then it kind of rounds off. So the neat thing about that is, you know, it makes it so that the pen is a lot less likely to roll. Um, it'll kind of rock back and forth a little bit, but you know, the clip usually keeps it from rolling too far anyway. 
but you can actually kind of stand it up in different ways and it'll kind of rock back and forth like that. But, um, you know, it's just kind of a neat design aspect of this pen. These are the four colors of the Monteverde Impressa as they're released here in February of 2014. I have a black with chrome with a matching uh, chrome grip section. The nib you can either get in chrome or black. There's a black with rose gold, so it's kind of like this pinky metallic color with a rose gold grip as well. There is this pearl silver with blue. It's kind of a purpley blue trim. This is really kind of an interesting color and it's got that blue grip as well. And then a gunmetal with red, which is kind of interesting. Um, really neat, neat looking kind of color scheme going on. Now all of these pens, these are Monteverde pens, so you can actually um, swap out these number six nibs for the black Monteverde nib or the chrome one. Depending on what retail you're getting it from, they may give you the option. Um, as I have them on the pens here, that's how they're being offered. So the black with the rose gold and the gunmetal with red uh, come from Monteverde with black nibs, and the other two come with the um, you know chrome color nibs. Uh, but these are the four colors for the Impressa. Showing you some of the details of the Impressa here, you can really see that square, square cap going on right there that kind of transitions to round by the time it gets to the bottom of the cap. Um, here's your spring clip. Nice big spring there. This, uh, this metallic gunmetal finish is really kind of neat. I don't know how well it'll come across in the video, but uh, it definitely has kind of this iridescent look to it a little bit if you get really up close and do it. And then, uh, you know, showing you the grip there. The step is really gentle on this pen too, you know, especially for a snap cap because the metal here is relatively thin on the cap. It does get a nice, um, a nice kind of gradual step there. And then looking in here, you can see there's the insert to the cap, which should help to keep this thing uh, from drying out because it's got a nice insert that'll really kind of keep that nib, nib nice and, uh, and wet. And then there's nothing, uh, nothing fancy going on here, no finial craziness or anything like that. Um, it's got the logo written here, you know, Monteverde USA, and then it says Impressa. You know, I'm looking at the other pen, um, here's the, the blue, the uh, pearl silver one uh, has the same kind of imprint or color, you know, thing going on, except it's much less noticeable. The other ones, you know, the black ones, it's, it's a little more noticeable. So the, um, the logo is definitely the most subtle on the, on the pearl silver. So I got a bunch of different pens here I want to compare the Impressa to. Because it's in such an, in, in a sweet spot kind of price range, there's a lot of really good pens that I think will uh, kind of stack up to it. So let's take a look at those. Um, so I just grabbed a couple that I thought would be kind of most known or most uh, pertinent, I guess. Um, similar style a little bit to the Twisby Classic and kind of a similar size too. Um, the Twisby Classic is of course the piston filler, so that's one uh, slight advantage you have there. But the Monteverde has got a bigger nib um, and it's uh, more substantial weight to it. And the Classic doesn't post, so that's one disadvantage to that pen. Um, so, uh, you know, as far as that goes, but it's, it's in a very similar kind of price range too and similar nib offerings. Um, Lamy All Star, you know, this one is a very popular pen. The Safari is really, really similar to it as well. Uh, the All Star, though, I chose to compare just because it's a little bit heavier. But even still, though, the All Star is only going to be 22 grams, and this thing is 40. So it's almost twice the weight of an All Star. So that is a consideration. You know, the weight of this pen is something that's going to be either a great selling point or something that people are going to absolutely hate. Um, about this pen. Uh, the All-Star is a little bit longer though when it's posted, so, you know, compromise there. Uh, another pen that I have here is the Platinum Cool, and I grabbed this one because, um, you know, it's, it's kind of similar in size and it is also a snap cap. Um, the Cool though is a little bit, little bit different bird because it's a kind of a demonstrator and um, it's got the clear feed and stuff like that. Um, it's also got uh, kind of a little bit of a semi-flex nib to it. So I don't really put it in the same classification necessarily, but I thought it would be nice to kind of compare that. And then I've got 
the Jin Hao. Um, this one is the X750. The X450 is fairly similar though. This is this is a heavier pen though, so this one is somewhat comparable here. Um, nib offerings on this one is a little bit limited. Uh, however, it is it is a much less expensive pen too, so it's there is kind of a compromise there. Um, and then you know showing it posted as well. Um, it's a fatter pen. It's a little bit bigger uh, than the Monteverde one, but there you go. And then uh, last but not least, the one I have is the Monteverde. Invincia. This is actually an Invincia Deluxe. Um, I got the rose gold here. The the Monteverde has the Invincia Color Fusion, which is uh, no carbon fiber on it. It's just an enamel color coating. And then they have the Invincia, which has a carbon fiber body but an enameled cap. And then they have the Invincia Deluxe, which is carbon fiber on both the cap and on the body. So very similarly named pens there, the similar style, it's just the body material is different. Um, and the nibs on these are going to be the same as what you can get on the, um, the Impressa. So this pen is much more expensive. This is $135 list price. So at Goulet we have this for 108. So you're looking at 108 for the carbon fiber sweetness uh, versus 40 for the Impressa. Literally same nib and same kind of writing experience. So if you really like the Invincia and kind of the nib the offerings that Monteverde has, the Impressa is uh, the most affordable pen that has that number six size nib on it that Monteverde currently offers. So I'm getting ready to fill up my Monteverde Impressa. It's a standard international cartridge converter pen. So you can use cartridges with it. Uh, but I prefer to use bottled ink myself. The converter that it comes with, this is um, what I have on my site called the Artista Crystal Converter, because that's the pen that comes with the Monteverde Artista Crystal. Um, it's the, still a standard international though. Um, however, this is the more recognizable standard international converter. It's very similar to the Artista Crystal one, except you get slightly more ink capacity in the regular standard international converter. And it's a little bit longer too. So as soon as I pulled out this pen for the first time and saw this converter, I was thinking to myself, oh no, is it all oh, gonna have to take this converter? Cause is there enough room inside the pen to accommodate the larger standard international converter? Cause I know a lot of people have these laying around already or would want to get this one instead of the other one. Uh, but I, as soon as I put it on here, I was like, okay, that's good to go. So this pen will still accept a normal standard international converter. It does not have to have this, you know, um, different style standard international artistic crystal converter that it comes with. So I've got my Impressa here. I've got a bottle of Bonaverde Black um, that I figured would be an appropriate one to use with this pen. It's very easy to take this converter out, or take this uh, pen body off. Converter, make sure it's kind of snug on there. It's not threaded like most of the other Monteverde pens, so it is pressure fit on there. So you don't want to go jostling it too hard, but it's a fairly snug fit. It's not going to go plopping off into your bottle um, without, you know, as long as it's securely fit. So you grab the top of it here, and then you just take and get that piston all the way down, and then you want to submerge the entire nib all the way up into the grip because this little hole right here, all the way up at the base of the feed, that's where, that's where it's actually gonna draw the ink up into the pen. And then just kind of slowly draw it up. And you're gonna get a good air bubble in there to start. So what's always a good idea is to just expel the ink back out. Whenever you're inking up a pen for the first time, there's a lot of air that's caught in the feed there you go. And now I've gotten rid of most of that air. And let me grab my paper towel. It's always a good idea to have that handy. And then just kind of wipe off the excess from the grip on here. As much excess off the nib as you can. And then screw the body back onto the pen. And now it's inked up and ready to write. So now that I have my Impressa all inked up, I've got it uh, with Monteverde Black on a Rhodia uh, 80 gram paper, number 16 dot pad. Dots are five millimeters apart. That's why I 
part of why I like this paper. Um, and I've got a fine nib on this pen. This is a Monteverde fine nib. They have a fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 millimeter stub, italic, that you can get in this black finish or in the chrome finish. So, do a little bit of writing here for you. I really can't write and talk at the same time. Monteverde's nibs run slightly broad. They're not a Japanese fine or anything like that. Fine is as fine as they go, and it's 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 fine. It's it's <laughs> it's fine. It's um, good. It's it's if if you have cheap paper, the fine nib is what you're going to want to go with. If you got a little better paper, you can go with the medium or the broad. Um, the stub is pretty good too. Um, I really like the stub, um, just kind of myself because it's kind of like cheating a little bit as far as your handwriting goes. It kind of looks like, you know, calligraphy a little bit without having to really do anything different. Um, but you can always compare everything here that you see in our nib nook. That's where I've done writing samples of all of the nibs of the Monteverde pens as well as all the other pens you carry on GouletPens.com. And then just to show you a little bit of how wet this is, some of the Monteverde nibs tend to be a little bit dry. They're really not super gushing. Um, this is a lubricated ink as well, so it's coming out a little heavy, but it's, it's fairly dry. I mean, the ink itself is not fast drying or anything. It's getting a little bit of smearing, but in general, um, really not a super, super wet nib. So um, for that reason, it tends to work pretty good on some of the cheaper papers and stuff. But all in all, you know, the nib is fairly smooth. It's not super glassy smooth, so it's going to have a little bit of feedback to it. It's going to feel kind of like a graphite pencil, like a smoother graphite pencil. Um, so that's kind of the feel of the Monteverde nibs. But generally, they're fairly reliable. Um, you can look at the reviews on my site, or you can you know check some other reviews that people have done. That is the Monteverde Impressa. So like any pen, the Impressa is going to have its pros and its cons. Some of the pros for this particular pen, um, definitely the price. It's in a great price range. A lot of options in that price range for stuff to consider, but this one is right in there where it's attainable for most people, kind of no matter what your level of experience is with fountain pens. The nib options, the number six size nib, it's a great size, very popular, used in a lot of different pens. Your nib size choices, fine, medium, broad, 1.1, and the fact you can get that silver or black finish to it is really pretty cool too. That sealed cap and the fact that it's a snap cap, very convenient. The fact that it posts also makes it a little more versatile for those who like that. Um, I like the spring clip too. The spring clip makes it really easy to get it in and out of your shirt. Uh, no matter what thickness, you can be wearing a flannel shirt and still use this thing really well. Also, the color options of the pen are pretty cool. I really kind of am digging that. And then the last thing I like about it is that it, the size of the pen, even though it's a little heavy, the size of the pen is very comfortable, I think, no matter kind of what size your hands are. So that's definitely on the plus side. There are some downfalls to the pen too, things that are probably gonna vary a lot based on individual preference, but the weight of the pen is gonna be a turnoff for a lot of people I know. 40 grams is pretty heavy for a pen. Some people are gonna like that and it's gonna feel like really good quality. Other people are not gonna like that at all. Also, the fact that it's got a metal grip section. Some people don't care about that, but if you're writing for a long period of time, that grip can get a little slick and be a little hard to hold on to. So that's definitely something to take into consideration. Also, it's gonna show fingerprints like crazy. It's a high gloss finish on the entire pen and you're constantly gonna be wiping it off. So if you're really OCD about fingerprints on your pen, don't even think about this thing because it's gonna drive you nuts. And the last thing too is the converter. The converter is completely functional and services very well. You can take it apart and lube it up and stuff like that. However, I do like a little bit more incapacity that you get with the, t the normal standard international converter, but you can always upgrade that later. So it's not a huge deal breaker to something worth pointing out. Well, I tried to be pretty thorough in this video, but you may still have questions and that's totally okay. Uh, you can leave a comment on YouTube or on Ink Nouveau. You can leave a tweet or a comment on Facebook and either I or somebody on my team will be able to help you out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, right on.